Dear gaming lords, why have you forsaken us? You know, there are times when you're sitting down to play a game, that moment that hinges between excitement and absolute terror as you wonder what's gonna greet you on the other side of the power button. Well, my name is Carrick, this is ACG, and today I'm bringing you a review for just a title like that, Resident Evil Umbrella Core for the PS4 and PC. Listen, I've been waiting for a Resident Evil multiplayer shooter for just about as long as I've been waiting for an Alan Wake Puzzle Quest ripoff game, but I'm going to give anything a chance once. Umbrella Core tells the tale of a decade after the collapse of the Umbrella Corporation, and upon that collapse, other companies have stepped forward to scoop up whatever research data has been left around. You play one of those mercenaries somewhat relegated to sprinting around incredibly small maps that somehow magically have the lost data just sitting in them for pickup, which begs the question why these companies just didn't hire really good custodial companies to go in and pick it up, but whatever. This game's now available for $30. Let's see if it's worth it, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for the deathmatch-styled Resident Evil Umbrella Core, the world's longest tutorial, zombie radar jamming, and the fact that apparently zombies have radar in the first place. Graphics are up first. You know, so whether you're on the PC or the PS4, the graphics here can really only be described as serviceable at best. While occasionally there's some interesting effects like a rainstorm or the smoke effects from various grenades and some explosions that look good, the end result overall is still a game that's absolutely mired in past-gen tech. I mean, even if you're cracking this thing up to extra high resolutions, it's bland texture work and overall presentation of the levels, the characters, and pretty much everything, it never excels. Also, who made the animation? I mean, really, who made it? Because they deserve some kind of award for finding the quickest way between two points, which is apparently just skipping entire keyframes of animation. Everything looks jilted, stilted, and rough, from the oddly truncated leap to attack a downed foe with your oddly named brain or combat axe to moving into and out of cover. Even just sitting back and watching another player rub, touch, fondle, and scrape themselves along a wall while they're trying to figure out how to just climb over it. The sad fact here is everything is roughed. Honestly, I've seen free-to-play multiplayer games with far higher graphical and presentation design work. But what's truly astounding is the fact that the game's main content matter here, zombies, look so incredibly poor. Whether rising like claymation altered beasts from sacks of jiggering meat that are laying all across the ground, to zombie dogs leaping in repeated animation loops at your body over and over and over again, with no care in the world for gravity, collision detection, or fun. Now, not helped at all by absolutely claustrophobic, even though surprisingly vertical level design, the game's one benefit is the layered design itself, where you find yourself sprinting across a stone walk, leaping down behind a fiery car, and then crawling under your friend's firefight. You know, if it didn't all look so shit while doing so, it'd be cool, but the game runs at a frame rate that gives the word variable such flexibility you could probably spell it from now on by just posting a picture of this game's box art in the dictionary. Here's the thing, really. It's asking 30 bucks. It's carrying the responsibility of the name Resident Evil and its title, and it looks like, for the most part, no one really cared. So let's move on to something that might be better. Sound, music, and voice. operation. As always, sound is up first. While some of the sound is excellent with a couple particular weapons having a good low-end growl to them, most of the starting weapons, and in particular their early handguns, sound like their entire sample's been truncated and squeezed down into a new compressible format I like to call least effort possible. I mean, I get it, you don't want it booming into the ears of your players, but this isn't a Steven Seagal movie where a two-liter bottle completely silences a gun. Let's get some realism in here for once. Malay weapons have the same drab, squishy sound we always get with these titles, and they don't seem to give a shit about any kind of audio realism, regardless of any of your settings. As a package, pretty poor sound, but it does have one or two highlights. Music. Barely any. What's there is ambient techno thriller and some bombastic dynamic bits that pick up when you're in the heat of battle or when you die and you're getting smunched on by zombies. It's forgettable and it doesn't seem to have any real connection to the title's levels. And it does the one damning thing that music should just never do, and that's that it has no emotional resonance with the locations themselves. Poor music. Voice. So it's very little, mostly just people yelling out orders and some absolutely terrible voiceovers when you win or lose that give new meaning to the term phoned in because actually these sound like they're literally phoned in. Just bad. Gameplay. 
You know, as Pimp Johnny used to tell me, once again, gameplay is where the meat hits the street. A game like this needs to supply a couple things, an interesting form factor, unique upgrade paths, and a reason for a player to return. Otherwise, it's quite simply prostituting the name of the main fiction for sales. Now listen, this is a multiplayer shooter with a single player game that's called a campaign, but it's really just a shooting gallery in a boredom form, and possibly the longest tutorial preparing for multiplayer I've ever seen. It has a couple sweet spots with one or two enjoyable missions, but ultimately it's hampered by some of the issues I'm going to discuss, well right now. So multiplayer, first I have to say I love the amount of customization. They nailed it. There's all kinds of patches and symbols and items you can customize on your character. And though running around with a bright yellow face mask is sort of like saying, hey, please shoot me here when you're playing on some of these drab levels, the ability to customize is really greatly appreciated. You pick some loadouts, a character type, and then boom, you're sort of off. Now as you level up, you unlock some starting packages, more items, and more guns. What's great is this all sort of sounds like it's getting better, but it's not because honestly, this game is a control hate crime. Whether crouching, sprinting, or crawling, the moment you start moving around, you're going to realize that it wasn't that good in the original game, and so therefore there was no reason to take this movement and put it into a multiplayer game, but that's pretty much exactly what they did, especially when everybody else is going to be moving at the speed of Adderall. No one's sitting for longer than a quarter of a second in this title. It's not like the original games. Movement's clunky slow, has a tremendously appreciable input delay, and is rough even after customization of all the various sensitivities. Now that doesn't mean everything is bad. As you semi-truck your way through the levels, you find the different modes in multiplayer, most of which unfortunately have been done elsewhere in better ways by better games and better environments. Team deathmatch and such is here, but so is an interesting and quick fun version of One Life to Live. Basically, you just go out there, you've got one life to live, and boom, you're dead. And if you are, you can communicate with your teammates, but you really can't do anything else. Now watching others play, even players who are top level, showed folks bouncing off walls, animation stalls, broken collision detection, and a desire by ranked players to just run out the clock in hopes of a tie or luckily the other character on the other side dying. Now also you can choose to include the zombies in the level or not, which can be interesting because no one really has a ton of life in this game and even the best players can get caught in mid reload by some zombie rising from a pool of gibbering low resolution slush behind them that seems to seep up from the earth in various places anyway. Also, multiplayer connections are a bit tragic at best, and the way the game handles sign-offs and leads and who's handling the server is not very good. There's a good number of times where you're just going to be sitting there waiting with bated breath as people come in and leave, and the game continually resets the counter to fill, or worse yet, just kicks you back to the title screen sometimes. Now, all of this obfuscates one part of the game that I absolutely enjoyed. Teamwork does work here with cover fire and suppressed retreats working really well because of the low health state everyone has. But also the cover system, which is pretty much standard, but it has this one little extra which allows you to sort of lean in and out of cover more and more, risking accuracy for danger. I dug that. I just wish it was in a better title fun factor. Listen, teamwork works here, and you can see the original plans for the title sometimes come through, but this is just plainly not that fun. It's boring. The single player is rote and almost useless to play through, even for the items you get while doing so. The multiplayer and almost all of its systems are just rough as hell, and I'm not sure a game should be so easily laughed at versus laughed with. Also, less than half a dozen maps, how about less than half a dozen dollars for your game? So I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale for 30 bucks on launch. This is a never touch it. Even at $9.99, it would be double the price that I would want to pay. Try to figure that math out. Free to play shooters offer vastly more gameplay without spending a dime. Better control, far better graphics, better level design, and are just better. Listen, I firmly believe almost no one wakes up and says, man, I can't wait to make a boring and overall poor game. But I do think that as game development moves on, Standards are dropped in favor of release dates. So in the immortal words of the Bard Ice Cube, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. This is a contested genre, now one that delights in chewing up titles unprepared or unwilling to offer adequate price versus offering. This game doesn't. So as always, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Check us out on Twitter. Maybe check out the patron. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.